the V-bomber aircraft are synonymous in Britain as a symbol of national defence and attack. During the Cold War, there were three types of aircraft devised to make up the United Kingdom's strategic nuclear strike force. Along with the iconic Vulcan, the other two aircraft that made up the group was the Vickers Valiant and also the Hanley Page Victor. Although the Vulcan is possibly the most famous of the three, each V-bomber would have an extremely important role in protecting Britain during the Cold War, but also in dropping a nuclear weapon should the situation warrant it. Today however we look at the rather tragic story involving XM714, a Hanley Page Victor V-bomber that crashed in 1963, killing a number of the crew members. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Victor is a colossal aircraft. It's a jet-powered strategic bomber that was developed and produced by Hanley Page. It was the third and final V-bomber operated by the RAF and had been developed as part of the UK's nuclear airborne deterrent. Hanley Page had been rather successful in the past with their creation of the Halifax bomber and the company then looked at designing better bombers which attracted interest from the air ministry. What they came up with for the Victor was a futuristic looking and streamlined aircraft with four turbojet engines buried in the thick wing roots. Compared with the Valiant and the Vulcan, the Victor's bomb bay was much larger than the other two V-bombers and allowed heavier weapons loads to be carried. Of course with the increase in weight, you'd lose some range, however instead of carrying a single 10,000 pound nuclear bomb as required, the Victor's bomb bay was designed to carry several conventional armaments, including a 22,000 pound Grand Slam or two 12,000 pound Tallboy earthquake bombs. It could also carry up to 48 1,000-pound bombs or 39 2,000-pound sea mines. The armament and payload capacity of the Victor was much more diverse than the other V-bombers. Later Victors could also work as missile carriers for standoff nuclear missiles such as a blue steel weapon. Basically this missile was a piloted winged aircraft powered by a rocket engine. On launch, the rocket's engines would power the missile along a predetermined course at around Mach 1.5 exceeding to Mach 3 when it approached the target. When it arrived over the target, the engine would then cut out, the missile would free fall and then it would detonate its 1.1 megaton warhead. So the Victor was an extremely powerful aircraft for the RAF to operate during the Cold War. Deliveries of the B-1 Victors began in late 1956 and 86 of these would be built building up the numbers of the aircraft. In the circumstance of deploying a large scale nuclear strike, the RAF doctrine dictated that each Victor would have operated independently. Their crew would conduct their mission without any external guidance, and extensive crew training was maintained to ensure that this could be done. The crews on board were usually served together for at least five years, and each week to maintain the operational lifespan of the Victor, they would usually fly a five-hour training mission. In times of increased and high international tension, the V-bombers would be dispersed and would maintain a high state of readiness. If the order to deploy a nuclear strike was given, the Victors would have been airborne in under 4 minutes from the point of the order being issued. It is considered however that the Soviets could detect a Victor at up to 200 miles away and due to advancements in Soviet anti-aircraft warfare, the Victor would become a more low level high speed bomber, swapping high altitude for lower. So it's clear that the Hanley Page Victor was a rather integral aircraft to the United Kingdom's nuclear attack force. However today, we're going to specifically look at the rather horrific story of XM714. Very little is known about the aircraft, however it was based at RAF Wittering near to Peterborough in England. RAF Wittering as a base had a very active history. During the Second World War, it was very busy during the Battle of Britain and deployed many fighter aircraft to defend Britain. After the war, it transitioned into more of a bomber station with the first V-bombers being delivered to the base in July 1955. During the 1960s, there were two squadrons of Victor B-2 bombers at RAF Wittering. These were both part of the Quick Reaction Alert, which could quickly launch a nuclear strike which we mentioned earlier. 
at the base, two nuclear armed aircraft were permanently on standby, with 15 minutes readiness to take off if needed. They were parked within 300 feet of the westerly runway, and at times of heightened tension, four bombers could be stationed by the runway. If the aircrew at the time were inside the aircraft, then a victor could be airborne within just 30 seconds. On March 20th, 1963, however, tragedy would strike. In the evening of March 20th, 1963, a Hanley Page Victor B-2 bomber, XM-714, would take off from RAF Wittering on a training flight. Whilst northeast of Wittering, disaster would strike. Shortly after takeoff, the aircraft would strangely stall and would begin to start to spin and spiral towards the ground. On board, a fire warning was indicated for the number two engine at around an altitude of 4,000 to 5,000 feet. During the fire drill, the airspeed of the aircraft was allowed to drop and the aircraft began to violently judder and shake. This moment must have been terrifying for the six crew members on board. The captain said that he was climbing for height, despite the severe juddering, and believed that he had sufficient speed to do so safely. However, he believed he was travelling 100 knots faster than he actually was. On board the aircraft was Pilot and Flight Lieutenant Alexander Galbraith, Co-Pilot Flight Lieutenant Brendan Jackson, Radar Navigator Flight Lieutenant Edward Vernon, Plotter Flight Lieutenant James Churchill, Air Electronics Officer Flying Officer Terence Sanford, and Master Navigator Albert Stringer, who was judging the effectiveness of the training mission. At the point in which XM-714 would have been shaking violently, it must have been extremely scary, and the aircraft would enter a spin and then rapidly head towards the ground. Panic would have set in, and as the aircraft plummeted towards the ground, co-pilot Brendan Jackson, understanding what was going to happen, immediately ejected from the Victor. He would go on to survive the crash, escaping with many broken bones, but importantly, would escape with his life. This fate wouldn't be so fortunate for the rest of the other crew members. The aircraft plummeted into the ground near to RAF Wittering. Immediately the area was cordoned off with the RAF police and crash teams from the base, as well as local police and the fire brigade. Trees were engulfed in flames, as was the wreckage, with the whole nearby village of Barnock being smothered in thick black smoke. Local residents when interviewed by local newspapers would state that debris from the crash was found over 50 yards away. The cockpit canopy landed on one side of a farm, falling through the roof of a stone outbuilding, and also allegedly part of the aircraft caused significant damage to a house. The incident struck fear into the locals, who had already been slightly apprehensive about the flying activity taking place nearby, fearing a crash. Every crew member except co-pilot Brendan Jackson would die in the crash, with five fatalities on board, unfortunately no other casualties on the ground. The aircraft plummeted and hit the ground around eight miles northeast of where it took off. An investigation into the incident would occur nearby, and the sole surviving crew member Flight Lieutenant Jackson would tell the inquest that the number two engine warning light came on at around 4,000 feet. At that point, the crew did a normal fire drill, as they couldn't physically see the aircraft's engine. The base had been informed of the incident, and the crew were warned to check their parachutes. It was at this stage that the intense buffeting occurred, and the nose of the plane reared up and went into a spin. Allegedly, the pilot gave the order to eject, and before Flight Lieutenant Jackson ejected, he heard someone in the rear saying they couldn't move. The design of the plane meant that even though the pilot and co-pilot had ejector seats, the rest of the crew had to bail out. A witness on the ground stated that no fire was occurring on board the engines or the aircraft when it crashed. There is some scepticism with the account of the events, however. Different sources state that the aircraft fell into a spin at between 4,000 to 5,000 feet, and some others indicate that the aircraft started falling at around 800 feet. Flight Lieutenant Brendan Jackson maintained that he ejected from the aircraft at around 2,000 feet. Jackson would later go on to have an illustrious career with the Air Force after the incident. The story of Victor Bomber XM714 is largely forgotten in history. The events of the evening of March 20th, 1963 saw the lives of five RAF servicemen killed 
after a failure involving part of their engines. Also, the slight misjudgement by the pilot could have possibly resulted in the crew not having enough time to bail out of the aircraft. As the Victor spiralled down towards the ground, however, it must have been incredibly scary for everyone on board the aircraft. Only one man would survive, however, he would be severely injured. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching.